Our first speaker up today is Mark Swift. Uh, Mark is from Parks in New South Wales uh, and is sponsored by John Deere. Uh, and he studied why agriculture isn't uh, why why isn't agriculture getting better and faster in regard to productivity innovation? Um, so uh, he's going to look at the precautionary principle. Uh, when I was in uh, Texas A&M doing uh, a course earlier this year, they introduced me to a concept called a uh, a BHAP, uh, which is a big, hairy, audacious plan. So I think Mark has come up with a big, hairy, audacious topic. <laughs> So I'd like to uh, ask Mark to come forward and uh, as he tweeted this morning, he's uh, two years searching for the antithesis of innovation. Let's hear how I can articulate that in 12 minutes. <laughs> My name is Mark Swift. I'm a Nuffield Scholar from 2012 uh, from Parks in central New South Wales. And I'm here to try and articulate a point about why agriculture isn't getting better and faster. And this is really in regard to what inhibits innovation. Before I start, I must uh, firstly thank Nuffield Australia for the opportunity. Uh, I think it has been described appropriately as a big, hairy, audacious topic. Um, I thank them for taking me on. It was a risk. I didn't know how I was going to, um, to execute this. I must also thank John Deere. They've been a wonderful company to work with and my contacts there have been really engaged in the process the whole way. Uh, both Mike Park and Cheryl Friend I've been in constant contact with and they have been really valuable assets along this journey. <coughs> I must also acknowledge a few people who've helped me. Uh, this group in front of you, uh, there are mentors who agreed to be my referees in getting involved in this, uh, people who have assisted in getting, uh, uh, organising meetings around the world that I never could have hoped to um, get to otherwise. Uh, I must also thank the hosts who've had me around the world, they've opened their homes and their businesses to me and it's been very humbling the hospitality that we've received. Uh, to my family, uh, Thank you for looking after our home and business in our absence. It, um, I'm sure it's been a personal growth period for you all to figure out that um, I really don't matter that much. <laughs> <laughs> but most importantly, to my wife, Katrina, and my daughter, Peggy, they, um, they travelled with me for 10 weeks of my personal study. Peggy's two, so that provided some unique challenges, uh, but what we saw was completely different because we travelled as a unit. We travelled a bit slower, but we had a great opportunity to really explore everything because we could take a little bit more time. To Team Snuffield, my Global Focus Program uh, participants, you're a wonderful crew. We had such a great time. It's so humbling to have such a, a, a wonderful group of friends. Um, really is a pleasure, and that is how we got the name. This is in India in a... Uh, <laughs> this is in India at a, a, a compost facility. <laughs> so let me take you on a journey around the world two and a half times and try and articulate what I've found. If I could have started from this position, my topic today, my discussion today would have been entirely different because I would have had the, been able to ask the appropriate questions. But as it's turned out, I've just pushed the level of understanding a little bit further down the road and I hope this opens up some new discussions and some new questions for future scholars moving forward. So what I've come to the conclusion of is that we really are dealing with the psychology of risk management. And when we introduce a novel technology or management system, uh, people will tend to move one way or the other on this spectrum. Uh, I will be uh, ambitious enough to suggest that most of the people in this room would sit on the opportunistic side when it comes to innovation and new topics that we, or new, new techniques that we come to in agriculture. The general public, however, <coughs> tend to push more towards the cautious side. I think there are some underlying reasons behind this, particularly how 
a new innovation is presented to them? Is it, is it given to them through a mechanism highlighting the dangers and risks, or is it given to them op with the, the thought processes around the opportunities that, this, that exploiting a new technology will provide? So if we wish to maintain the liberty to continue to exploit the wonderful opportunities that are being presented by my fellow scholars and by the people <coughs> who have come before me, we need to articulate why both the benefits that come with the risks that are associated with new technologies and, in, and adapting them and adopting them within our businesses. We need to articulate in many regards why agriculture has been able to advance to the professional status that we have now and what that has done to underpin the improvements in living standards that are at least the three and a half billion people within the middle class of the world currently exploit, but another three and a half billion people are yet to fully take advantage of. In my travels, I have experienced some great differences in how countries deal with risk and how they approach the novel. There's a picture of the Louvre there. I think it's uh, that France is symbolic of a highly cautious society when it comes to new technology. They really are one of the greatest impediments in Europe to advancing productivity improvement. I don't think it kills innovation, but what I think it does is it focuses innovation. And it, it, it pushes French farmers in a different direction. We also have a photo there of the Golden Temple, which is the Sikh holy place. We were very fortunate to get through there that day, and those two gentlemen uh, were wonderful hosts as we went through, uh, being Mali Malwinda and Raj, Raj Winda, uh, who is, is also involved in Nuffield. Uh, India, home of the, uh, in many regards, of the Green Revolution, and is still pushing that advancement forward. It understands what food security is, and it does as much as it can not always perfectly, in trying to ensure that it has food security. In the middle there, I visited Ben Retschke in Iowa. Ben was putting out some trace elements and some fungicides on his corn at that point in time, and these were his contractors. That's a blacktop road, probably as busy as the main street of Perth, I hazard a guess. And these guys were loading up there. <laughs> So it strikes a different balance, but I think uh, there is a real trend in the US. They, are, they will end up in the same place as the EU, but they will take a different path to get there. Another thing I've noticed is scale of business and what that does in terms of innovation within a business. As a generalisation, large businesses tend not to make really transformative changes, but there are exceptions. With what John Deere have done with the round bale picker that I've seen, they have taken that industry by storm and really rewritten the rules around <coughs> cotton production. And I think they will open cotton up to entirely new areas based around what they've done in that technology. Though, to continue with the generalisation, I think some of the really transformative things that I've seen will come out of small businesses. The little golden box down the bottom with the man standing up front is Terry Anderson and that's Autonomous Tractor Company or Corporation. This business has risen out of a think tank and agriculture can be really lucky that they were working on autonomy and they happened to fall into agriculture. I can't say that they will change the face of agriculture, but if the potential is realised, it will be a whirlwind for the next little while. So where did this all start? The seed of my Nuffield project was, was really rooted in stumbling into the access for GM canola debate. This is 2006, the debate had been going for several years now, still had a few years to go, and I didn't know how it was going to pan out. We got there, but it took a bit of time. But during this <coughs> process, I kept hearing about this term called the precautionary principle. Now, what is the precautionary principle? 
There are a multitude of definitions. In, its, in, the, in the smallest context I can put it to you, if you bring out a new technology, it is for you to prove that it is safe. And it's, uh, the discussion is really about, in this, is proof of absence or absence of proof. Uh, once upon a time, it was really about absence of proof was enough to suggest that something was safe. Now, this has really lifted the bar to say it's proof of absence. A far higher bar. There's a real issue in this of complexity and the more we understand agriculture the more complex the system becomes and so the, from a general public's perspective we really are exposing them to new dangers from their perspective. The issue is we are also giving them wonderful opportunities to improve the human condition by, the, by being able to exploit the opportunities that are available. As I was driving across the Midwest, a question was posed, was coming to my head. Could we reintroduce the motor car? Here's a technology that is, is propelled by, um, by controlled explosions and will result in an Australian context in the death of a, a thousand people this year probably, and may many others, and has transformed the environment that we live in. Put in that context, it's a, quite a danger. If we look at the benefits that have come from it though, it has been a transformative technology. And my concern is, what are we limiting ourselves to now by not being allowed to manage the problems? From our business, understanding that complexity is a real key driver in terms of being able to simplify the system. We need to pick up what are the key touch points and how can we uh, simplify the process. It may mean we end up with slightly more complex machinery. This is a planter from Dakota Lakes Research Farm. It weighs about 14 tonnes and can do just about anything. But it kept it down to one pass. As an industry, we need to develop a supply chain dialogue. As individual in units within the industry, we are isolated and very easy to dismiss by the people of influence who reside in these buildings. As a whole unit, where, there are poten where there's potential to overlap and increase the size of the value capture for the whole lot of the whole of industry, we should be looking to work together. It won't be a utopia where there's not competitive tension, but it will help us gain influence in these, in these spaces. We have to highlight the, to the people of influence how society has developed and the, the, the key point that agriculture has had in advancing society as we know it. They need to be brought to the awareness that there will be no reward without some risk. <coughs> to bring it into a close, I personally um, have suffered from depression uh, and I think that depression has been rooted in a lack of understanding and being <laughs> thinking I should be able to control everything. What Nuffield has allowed me to do is realise where are the touch points of what I can actually control and focus on them rather than worrying about whether or not it has or hasn't rained. This photo is of my wife and daughter as they were travelling through Washington DC and enjoying the sights and sounds of that beautiful city. I sadly couldn't be with them that day. I had a meeting with CropLife America was pivotal, pivotal in my understanding of this topic. But there's still a pang of regret that I couldn't be with them that day. And it's really focused my attention that the time that I allocate really has to be put in the right spots. To conclude though, there's been a huge amount of bycatch to steal a term from the fishing industry in what I've researched. The opportunities I've been exposed to are legion. I now have to personally figure out which ones do I follow up and which ones do I let go. And I'd like to conclude by again thanking John Deere. They've been a wonderful sponsor. It's been a privilege to be the first, sponsor, uh, first scholar under your sponsorship and also to Nuffield Australia. It's been a wonderful experience and I thank you all.